morning, everyone. I'm Tony Lee, and I'm really happy to be here with you this morning. I have some fellow motorcycle riders here with me this morning from the Sikh community. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about the motorcycle ride that's coming up that the... Um, the Sikh community is putting on. We're going to tell you what it's all about, when it is, why it is, and invite you to join in and be part of that ride. But we're also going to talk a little bit about the Sikh community itself and try to help for those of us who, for whatever reason, don't know much about the Sikh community, who they are, what they do, why they're here. We're going to see if we can kind of fill in those gaps, too. Now, here comes the hard part. And that's introducing everybody. I am horrible. I'm really horrible when it comes to names. And I'm hoping I can say your names correctly. I really do, because I, I tend to mess names up you know, just terribly. I got lucky. When my mother named me, she gave me three letters for my last name and four letters for my first name. So it makes it really easy. Yeah, no, no. But <laughs> sometimes if I get to somebody that has five letters in their name, then I'm in trouble. So I don't know. But here we go. We're going to try this. Uh, Jag Mohan Singh. Singh. Oh, I see what happened. I got something. I was trying to write member that you are a member of the organization and somehow... All of the letters didn't come out, and they got stuck together, and it came out something like Sing Member. <laughs> and I'm thinking, that doesn't look right. <laughs> okay, we'll fix that one up. Okay, now, uh, Jag is a member of the group, of the motorcycle group that's going to be riding, but also a member of the Sikh community. And also, we have Sing, here it is, here we Gur Inder Singh. Basra. Yes, sir. Am I even close? Oh, you're very close. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Oh, you passed man. the four-letter test. You know, I wish if I could go... Now, where is the Sikh community? Where does it originate? From India? India, yes. Okay. See, that's what I need. I need to go to India. I need to stay there for like a year and just sort of get into the language and the customs and yeah. kind of learn. How do you say things mm, that make yeah. sense and sound correct, you know? as opposed to the way... Do you let us know when you're ready? I'll take you. <laughs> oh, man, that is, that is a, a great invitation. So let's start with talking a little bit about the Sikh community. And uh, what exactly is that? Is it a religion? Is it a... Uh, I mean, what is it? How, how would you describe the Sikh community? Well, Sikh is, you know, Sikhism is a religion. It started about 500 years ago in uh, northern India. Mm -hmm. which is uh, currently portion of it is Pakistan and portion of it is in India. Uh, the basics of starting the religion was that there was, there, uh, there was a lot of a Mughal empire and they want to convert everybody into Muslim. Mm -hmm. And then there was another religion that's been there for for ages called Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And those two forces were forcefully or um, making people foolish of things, converting them into their religions. Mm -hmm. And if you would not listen to them, uh, especially the Mughal empires, they will uh, convert you into their religion by force. Mm -hmm. And that's when our founding fathers stood up and said, you know, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a religion, right, and freedom to decide what they want to practice. Uh, if somebody wants to be a Muslim, that's okay. But mm -hmm. if you want to force them to be a Muslim, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the basic of it started. And then people were, uh, I don't know if you know about Hinduism, Hinduism was where if a man die, uh, women will be burned alive with the man. Uh, she mm -hmm. would have no right to live after him. Our founding father was the first in that Asian reason who said, no, this is not going to happen. If a, if a man died, women is not going to burn alive. He said, women has every single right to live her life if her partner passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of abusive uh, stuff that was happening towards women and children with between those two other religions. Our religion started more of learning uh, about education, 
more about freedom, more about mm-hmm. equal rights against uh, for for men and women. Mm-hmm. But Memin was under suppressed for thousands of years in India. So he wanted to uplift women too. And even our holy book um, says that uh, without a woman, this earth doesn't exist. Uh, women is the one who give birth to the kings and and people that have made successful um, out of life. If there, if there was not women, how would the life will begin, you know? Mm-hmm. So we have to, if women is our mother, women is our sister, women is our wife. How I, you know, how can we disrespect her? So our religion was the first in the Asian continent that started respecting women the way they should. And so that, that was the one big difference. Another one, uh, the, the, mostly the Mughal empires, they, there was a caste system in India. And the caste system is if you're, if you were born into for example, somebody who's barber, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, people will not shake hand with you. They think you're a lower class. Mm-hmm. And your family will be treated, um, they will tag them like a name in our own language, but it's like everybody will call them hey, barbers, their barber family. You know, Even if the kid doesn't want to do the same job, he will still be tagged with the same caste system. Mm-hmm. And so people with different religion beliefs, especially Hindus, have a lot of caste system where mm-hmm. they think if you're di- if you're born a poor, you're gonna die a poor. And if you're born into a family mm-hmm. which in society their created society doesn't have a respect, you will not get a respect. It doesn't matter how good human being you are. So when our religion started, it was it was that we're all equal. Uh, every human being is, has the same blood in them. So we're going to treat everybody equally with the respect. And so it was more if we will hug everybody, our temples are open for every human being. It doesn't matter if you don't even believe in a religion Mm -hmm. versus other religions in India. If you don't believe in their religion or you're not that caste that built the temple, you will not, you was not allowed to go in. You had to stay outside the temple. Mm-hmm. With our religion, it was everybody was welcome, and then everybody was treated equally. It doesn't matter if they didn't even practice the same religion; mm-hmm. they were still welcome and treated fairly. So that's one of the uh, the original uh, reason how the Sikh religion was founded. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is many other reasons, and after our first guru, which was Guru Nanak. Then the Mughal Empire start uh, slowly as a religion start build it, building. Um, the the people that were in power then start hating our people because they were trying to do something that was not allowed by their books. So it took over two hundred fifty years uh, for our founding fathers. There's ten gurus who founded the religion. And then they made their holy book, which is Guru Granth Sahib Ji, that they told every... In in the Asian continent, people used to believe there's other human beings who were treated like a goddess. Our founding fathers said, no, the holy book that is created, there, it's, it's about taking human brain to next level so education is your god you you're never we don't we don't never want you to worship any human being as a god because that was the biggest concept in that reason where, where human being were treated like a god and so our founding fathers said education is your god and you're going to pray to this book or, and, and because this book will lead you it's like a university of life, which will give you all the good meanings of how to be a good human being, how to be a good neighbor, how to be a good son, how to be a good husband. So those were the things. How to be, uh, how to be uh, someone who served their own country, where you live, where you live your motherland. Uh, for example, the Sikhs live 
uh, everywhere globally right now, like Canada, mm-hmm. uh, United Kingdom, India, Pakistan, even all the, countries, the United all States. Continent. Yes. And our people like to serve wherever they live. They treat their land as their own land. Mm-hmm. So even our kids now go serve in police, military, you know, Marines here in the country. Mm-hmm. And same people believe in the same religion in Canada do that for Canada. Mm-hmm. So it's not that if they were, you know, the origin was, religion was originally uh, originated in India. It's not that India is their only homeland. Mm-hmm. Wherever people live, uh, they have to make that as their homeland and love the country, which gives them a good life, good meaning of life. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's very open and it's very different than most religions, but also at the same time, it's very close to Christianity. Mm-hmm. There's only a few differences, but other than that, a lot of the principles are the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to take a short break, but when we come back, I definitely want to hear a little bit from Jag, and I want to um, kind of see if there are differences uh, between the Sikh religion and the Muslim religion, because you were talking about how at one time there was a, a battle going on between the two, where yes. one wanted to overtake the other and so on. But I think that's part of the confusion today, too, is a lot of people will see the people from the Sikh religion and they will think you're Muslims. Yes. Let's talk about why that happens and what are some of the differences. We'll do that as soon as we get... We are back again. We have Jag Mohan Singh who is a member of the Sikh group that's going to have this motorcycle ride. And again, we're going to tell you all about that too. Where it's going to happen, where you need to be if you're going to be in it, uh, what it'll cost, where they're going, the whole thing. We're going to give that to you. But I wanted to first of all kind of understand and learn well, who are the Sikhs, and where did they come from, and what do they do? Because I think there is still some confusion out here in the world. Uh, certainly there has been in the past, and as our friend here said, it is getting better. But I think there may be people who still don't really know and understand. Yes. And I want to make sure we have an opportunity to try and explain that to them as we welcome you to our community. I know you've been here for a while, but I've not had an opportunity to personally welcome you you. and say thank you for what you do in our community and thank you for being here today. So we have uh, Gurinder Singh Basra. Yes. And uh, he is also the president of the Sikh Riders, so he'll be talking about, you know, the ride itself a little more, too. But I want to go to Jag for a minute and talk about the differences between the Sikh religion um, and, let's say, the Muslims, because that's where I think there is some confusion. Yes. People see what they think of as a similarity, uh, the beard, the head covering, so on. What are the similarities? Why are they similar? Okay, the uh, religion started in 14th century, and uh, when it came to the fifth guru, and uh, they started saying that um, you need, you cannot bear a turban on the head. Only the uh, the kings, Mughal kings, and the nawabs, they can wear the turbans. You know, only like the people in the power. Mm-hmm. So in that, uh, our guru so told that everybody has a freedom. He can keep a horse. They said you cannot keep a weapon. You cannot keep a horse. You cannot wear a turban. So all these started in a revolt against the Mughals mm-hmm. on the Mughal empires there, you know. So they started wearing turban. We got to wear a turban because it's our coming turban. It didn't came through Mughals. Turban came from long, long, three, four thousand years back, you know. Because there was a too much heat, so you wear the turban on the head mm-hmm. to protect your head. Uh, it's mm-hmm. like, it's not a just cover. It's you're protecting your head from the heat. Scientifically, that was a reason people were wearing turban, but they did not want to bear other, because they came from Mughals. They didn't want to pay, uh, like wear turban, the Asian people, you know, on our religion. So they started wearing turban in the revolt mm-hmm. that we will wear turban, we'll keep the, a sword with us to protect ourselves, mm-hmm. we'll have a horse. Mm-hmm. So the Mughals won't try to convert you, mainly conversion. When king is there, not everyone, king always try to convert to his religion, you know. Not with the, like, you can explain about your religion, good things. 
you can explain about Christianity, you can explain about the Mughal, you can explain about Hinduism, but you cannot forcefully convert somebody. So uh, there was only two religions, like he told Gurinder Singh, mm-hmm. that there was a Hinduism and a Muslim, you know. So Muslim were the kings there. So the Mughals trying to convert people to Muslims. So that's the way they started, you know, th- this religion came in, in and started revolts. The first Guru, Guru Nanak, at that time, Mr. Babur, the king of the Mughals were Babur. Mm-hmm. He came from uh, on the Asia, you know. Mm-hmm. From, uh, you know, what you call Arab side. He mm-hmm. came from that side. Mm-hmm. Before Afghanistan, you know, these country, he came from that country. And he wanted to convert. So he said, no, we, we are not going to get converted like that. And uh, the main difference between uh, Muslim religion, they believe in uh, uh, one God like Allah. And that's, they say the Allah is there, but it's all, it's only in the Makkah. Allah is nowhere else. It's only in the Makkah. But our guru teaches that the God is everywhere. It's in you. Mm-hmm. It's inside you. Mm-hmm. So that's the main difference first. Mm-hmm. Okay. We believe that God lives in the human beings, mm-hmm. inside the human being. Mm-hmm. So that's why we have our holy book, which is from first guru to tenth guru. There's six guru writings and all those uh, saints like disciples were there mm-hmm. who were have same thinking uh, like our guru had same thinking, uh, freedom of speech, what we call in America, that was a freedom of speech, equal rights to women, mm-hmm. sharing and caring. So all these things were taught in that book. Mm-hmm. The holy book in our uh, temple, uh, we, bow, we go there and we bow our head. That means we are leaving our um, bad thoughts. We're going to take the good thought from the book. So we can become a best, good human being in our life. Mm-hmm. So the holy book teaches, that's it, mm-hmm. how to become a good human being. Mm-hmm. If somebody is a good human being, he can be good Christian, he can be good Sikh, mm-hmm. he can be good Muslim, he can be word, you know, Hindu. But if you are not a good human being, you cannot become anything. So okay. that's, uh, I give you some points on the okay. religion. You know, Great. Differences. Now, when it comes to the differences between the Sikh community and the Muslim community, is that where there was contention? Is there still contention today? And is that what sometimes you may face in the community? You, you know, the in 1700, uh, when the Mughals were losing power, uh, there was... There was a never a really a conflict between the public. Mm-hmm. It was more led by in a government then, which was led by Muslim leaders, mm-hmm. were forcefully trying to convert people into their religion. So our gurus fought many wars mm-hmm. with with against the power, which was the Mughal, mm-hmm. which was you know they were led by Muslim people. But public in general and the Sikh community in general were not fighting with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, even uh, there's there's a large population where the Sikh religion is founded in state called Punjab, mm-hmm. and there were majority uh, uh, was Muslim population there, and Sikhs were about fifteen percent. And then, but we had a Sikh king for like a, in the 18th century for about sixty years. Uh, he treated everybody equally. He did not want to do what the Muslims did, converting people forcefully. He let practice people their religion the way they wanted. Mm-hmm. But in in that before the British took over that con- complete that continent, uh, they lived side by side like friends, and they were there was a really love and harmony in in between the communities. Mm-hmm. It was more the people in power dividing people on a religion basis than the people itself. Mm-hmm. So, like, even um, the Hindus were, you know, they're doing the same thing now in India. Mm-hmm. They're converting, uh, they're forcing Christians to convert into Hinduism. They're mm-hmm. forcing Jans, Buddhists. And they're trying to convert Sikhs into Hinduism now because they're in a poverty. Mm-hmm. So it seems like those continents uh, don't want to understand that that 
having a religion right and having freedom to practice what you want is the is the good way of life that creates a better society mm -hmm. which is hard for them to understand because they think by having one religion in that continent is the only way to go mm -hmm. which is not the right path i think sure. personally but they can i don't i don't think they seems like they're getting over it you know if it's not muslims it's hindus, hindus. they're mm -hmm. trying to convert the other religions into their religion mm -hmm. yes. so i i think there's still a long way out before they realize that this is not the right thing to do yeah. but how yeah. is it here in the united states here in bakersfield is it i mean and especially i'm thinking more between the community and the Sikhs, as opposed to between the government, because I, I think our, hopefully, I am correct by saying that our government doesn't try to put one religion onto the people. But how, I mean, do, do we get along with one another very yes. well? Yes, you know, yes. this is the beauty about America, that, um, you know, Sikhs living here um, late, uh, late 18th century, mm -hmm. um, they moved here through British India Army to Canada, and then people migrated to the United States. They work in lumber mills in Washington, Oregon. Even a uh, larger Sikh, Sikh temple was built in 1890 in Stockton, California. Mm -hmm. That was the first Sikh temple in the United States. Mm. Pe people who have, uh, our community members that work in a ra railroad, but because they were not large in number, they're not mentioned in the history. Uh, worse as we hear all the time, there, there's a Chinese uh, laborer that work in a, ra a railroad, but there was also a Sikh laborer that worked in, in there. So Sikhs have living uh, in the United States and made it home over 100 years now. Mm. And the beauty about our country is they, you know, everybody is welcome here and practice what they believe and how they want to practice. And we are all living side by side with no issues, but there's, you know, here and there, you will run into an individual which is not, uh, you know, led by any government or, or mm -hmm. another religion who trying to manipulate or say things that this religion is the only one and the others shouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think United States is an example for world for religion rights and for people's personal uh, way of choosing the life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we are leading by example alongside Canada that we can all live side by side and still be a good citizens of, of where we live and make a better future for our neighbors, make a better future for our kids as a community and make a better country in a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I think we're still ahead of the game uh, when it comes to that. But there's, there's always bad apples in every community that, sure. that you're going to run into who are going to say, why are you wearing the turban? What is it? You know, they don't even say a turban. Some people use a word called rag and they, you know, I have heard of somebody saying, hey, is that a rag on your head, you know? And I think that's where people need to open up. And especially these days, everybody have a smartphone. They can Google it. They can get more information, you know, what is it about, you know? Yeah. But it sounds like those are people that don't want to know the truth. They that, don't yes. want good information. They just want to start a problem. Yes, Yes. Yeah, that's the, that's unfortunate. You know, those um, kind of since we're going to talk about a ride um, mm -hmm. uh, in in a minute, but I want to share this with you. I was reading some comments on uh, uh, Instagram, and somebody that saw, um, saw our flyer for the event comment on it that which country is this happening? You know, mm -hmm. when the flyer has all the information, correct? And he instead of saying a Sikh. He's saying sick, like somebody's mm -hmm. really being sick. You know, he's right. making a joke out of it. And then he's saying, which country is this happening? Mm. Where does these people come from? You know, and so there's always people who doesn't want to respect others and always want to create a problem mm -hmm. or say something that's negative 
which which is going to create and hate in other people's mind for no reason. Right. Let's take another quick break, and then we'll come back and jump right into the ride. Tell people what that's all about, when it's happening, where it's happening, how you can get into it, and so on. So hang on, folks. Get something to write on. You might need that just in case and stick it on the refrigerator. And in fact, we've got a refrigerator magnet here. I think I can just kind of put this up there yes. make sure that I remember, too. I do have a motorcycle, and I'm planning on being in that ride. Ride. Thank you. So I can uh, kind of just share some goodwill and, uh, you know, see what we can do and do it together. We don't have to sit out here and watch and let somebody else do all the good work. You know, we can get yes. in there with them. So hang on, folks. Hi. We're back again. And every time we start a new segment, I'm... I'm staring at the names, and I'm hoping I can say them right, because I think the worst thing you can do is, it, it, the most disrespectful thing you can do is to mispronounce a person's name. But I have to admit, I'm just not really good with the Sikh names. But Jag Mohan Singh is here with us. Yeah. He's a member of the organization. And uh, also we have Gurinder Singh Basra, president of the Sikh Riders, and we're going to talk about the Sikh Riders, who they are, where they came from, and what are they doing. So tell me about the Sikh Riders. Who are they? What is that group? Well, the Sikh Riders of America was founded here in Bakersfield um, in 2012. Uh, we had a hate crime incident where a gunman in Wisconsin state uh, Oak Creek went into our temple and uh, shot six people, and he thought that they were Muslims, which he sh if they were even Muslims, he shouldn't have done it. So after he killed six people, uh, here locally, friend of our, we were friends got together and say this is sad that it happened to our community members that we lost lives, uh, which were innocent, and they were praying in the temple. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do something to educate people who we are. So we, in that meeting, we formed the group and we wanted to go out and reach out to people because that was the one thing our community, uh, since it had been here over a hundred years, uh, people were, has been busy trying to, uh, struggle, make their lives better for their families and for themselves. But they don't really go out in the community and do much other than working hard. And so we figured we need to go out and reach out to people mm -hmm. and let people know who we are and on the, on the street level. Mm -hmm. So we formed the group in 2012, but right now we have members nationally. Uh, we have over 200 members, which there's uh, large numbers of it in Texas, Florida, Arkansas, you know, California. We have members in Colorado, Denver. Uh, so we have members all over the nation now. And our main mission is to, to help where there's needed. It could be natural disasters here at home. We also have been able to help when disasters happen overseas. We raise money and send it, which was like, it does, we doesn't pick a country. We pick wherever there's need. Mm -hmm. And so, but more, our bigger priority is to do stuff here locally because that's where we have bigger need with our veterans, with our law enforcement agencies, uh, agencies who help uh, children to become a victim of crime and other hate related and so we, um, since this is going to be our ninth annual motorcycle ride, and we start at Baker School Harley Davidson at 8 a.m., and the registration goes up to 1020. People can register at advance at www.soafundraiser.com, which would lead them to buy a ticket, but we also... Um, then from Bakersfield Harley Davidson, we ride to Piles Campground, Piles, Piles Boys Campground behind Lake Ming. And that's where we have, a, a live band. And then it's a mix of, uh, both culture event. We will have live band, which will be in English. Then we also bring our cultural dances. Uh, and then we also have activity for kids, for women. And for all sorts of ages, and there will be food, drink, music, mm -hmm. raffle items. And then the beauty of this event is when all the money that we raise will go to 
will benefit the charities in, in Kern County. And uh, I can tell you the names. Uh, it will be the Kern River Blue Star Moms, Mad Bakersfield Chapter, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, uh, Kern County's Triple Nine Foundation, which is uh, law enforcement, and also American Legion Chapter 26, which is a veterans group. Uh, all the money that we raise will go to those four charities. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we're going to honor our local law enforcement, which we did last year too. Well, we did a blood, we do a blood drive same day. Halchin Blood Bank will come out with their own bus and a lot of people will donate blood and that's to honor our local law enforcement, which includes Bakersfield Police Department, Sheriff Department and Highway Patrol, all the people that serve our community everyday basis. And we want to thank them by dono- donating our blood for them because that's what they do. When they're serving us, you know, they're, they give their blood for the community time to time, which I wish it shouldn't happen, but mm-hmm. we know tragedies happen all the time where we lose officers and, and, and all the, ch- all the charities that we help, they're either helping people in special need, children, law enforcement, and everywhere where our chapter does a motorcycle ride, uh, our funds stay locally in that in that county. Mm -hmm. So all the money that we raise in Bakersfield stays in Bakersfield for the charities Mm -hmm. that work on the ground in Bakersfield. And then our group uh, work year round whenever there's people in need in COVID, we were able to do a lot of things. We were able to make face shields, face masks when people need it and donate it to local police department, sheriff's office. And then even in Los Angeles, we were able to donate it to LAPD. And so our group work year round doing stuff in the community. Mm -hmm. And we even get individual people who are writers, veterans, Sometimes they're struggling, you know, during the COVID, people didn't know where to go get the help. Mm-hmm. So on that, we do it without making it public. We go under the radar and help people where there's needed. Mm-hmm. But our group here locally is pretty strong. And the beauty of it is, and most of the money that we raise and donate, we have been able to raise over half a million dollars in, in the past eight years. And most of the money comes from our members. Our members donate a large portion of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do get some sponsors from the community, which, you know, we want people to sponsor our event because it really helps uh, the nonprofits who mm-hmm. work on the ground. But uh, most of the money comes from our members. Okay. And if people want to donate, there's information on our website and also they can reach out to us and we can give them the information to to become a part. But on the ride, uh, it's, it's fun for everyone. Mm-hmm. Riders or non-riders are welcome to join the event. And $20 will get you a breakfast, lunch, ride pin. But if somebody uh, wants to come and they don't want to buy a ticket, they're more, more than welcome. Mm-hmm. And if they want to just come out and look at it, what's happening, how the event takes place. It's uh, you will get to learn about our culture, but at the same time, you will be able to learn about American culture. You will see how all different kind of people at one event together, laughing, enjoying, having good conversations, having fun, getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. So it's it also I will say it's a fundraiser event, but it's also a social event which built our social structure stronger as a community mm-hmm. yeah now there's going to be music yes uh what kind of music are we we're going to have a, a there's a local band called La call band mm-hmm. they will be there and then we also play punjabi music which will bring a lot of the folk dancers out yeah, see, and that's what i was hoping I, I want to hear some authentic you know punjabi music yes so i can see what it's like if i were to go to india what music would i hear yes and how would that sound so we get to hear that yes you will okay yeah now when you uh yearly you you know you get a certain amount of, i guess each year but last year we had the pandemic. Yes. Was the pandemic kind of like a, I mean, did that stop the ride? I don't remember whether we had a ride last year. Or... We had to postpone the ride last year, but we did not end up canceling the event. 
because what we did, uh, we end up organizing a blood drive at Bakersfield Harley Davidson. Okay. So we did not ride the motorcycles that day. We told people they can come to Bakersfield Harley, donate a blood, and then they can ride anywhere they want. We were not telling them where to ride mm-hmm. and how to ride. And uh, we had uh, uh, about 65 people donated blood that day. Okay. And then we, at the same day, we honored Bakersfield Police Department. Uh, we had a little uh, coffee mug love of token for local police department mm-hmm. that we made uh, thanking them. It was a coffee mug. They say thank you for your service mm-hmm. that we had for the whole department. Mm-hmm. And so we give it to the BPD and then all the people showed up and they, they were part of the prayers we did for law enforcement, for our community. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but we did not cancel, cancel. We were able to change a little and make a blood drive happen right. than the actual ride. This is a little better this year then yes, because yes. you'll be able to actually go on the ride. Yes. yes. Now, how what how do you well, I mean there are so many different kind of motorcycles out there. You got guys that just ride by themselves, yes. which would be someone like me. I, I don't have a membership. I did, but I don't hmm. ride with a club. Yes. But I mean kind of kind of club of various motorcycle clubs here in the city can they all come even yes. though they're different yes. clubs oh, yes. everyone yes. is welcome yes. doesn't matter he's in a club he's not in the club you know a okay. lot of club people comes there a lot of single guys like somebody in Fresno hears he gets a uh, you know see about flyer mm. online he comes there you know so everybody is welcome mm. to the ride it's not like particular somebody has to come, you know. Okay. We and we have people over the years came from San Diego, Los Angeles, yes. Lancaster, Palmdale, Fresno, Clovis, right. Delano. So we get people from all over the state, and of course, some are members even right down from Bay Area, mm-hmm. and some from Texas right to our event. Wow. But we also get a lot of support from. Uh, people from Castec, Los Angeles, you know, all over the place people come and join us. Mm-hmm. And that's why we say it's fun for everyone. And it, if even if they don't ride or they ride, uh, they should come join us and make a, our, our event and a community event a better event. Okay. Yeah. Let's take another short break. And when we come back, we're going to reiterate the dates and where you can get tickets. Do you need tickets to get in? No. Yeah, okay, yeah. but we want people to donate because yeah, that, yeah. yeah. that's important. Yes. So somehow they've got to get in there. And the $20 admission is what we're yes, going to yes. ask them for. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to give you a little more information about that to make sure you have all the details. And hopefully you'll show up and go on that ride and uh, have a great time. And have We're back again. Gorinder Singh Basra, president of the Sikh Riders. He's here with us and telling us about the ride. We also have Jack Mohan Singh, a member of the group. And um, we're just curious. I want to make sure everybody has all the intel about how to get their $20 admission fee paid. Can you do it online? Do you do it when you show up? There's somebody standing there with a desk or whatever and you give them the, the money. How, how do you do it? Yes, both of the options are there. Um, people can go online and www.sroafundraiser.com, one word. And that will take them to buy a ticket, which uh, includes breakfast, lunch, and a ride pin. And then our event is on October 9th. It's a Saturday, and it starts at Bakersfield Harley-Davidson at 8 a.m. And there will be a table. You can walk in, and you can do the registration and buy your $20 ticket there mm-hmm. if you're riding. Mm-hmm. And if you're not riding, then you can just buy a, a ticket, which will allow you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, I mean, so lunch. you can drive out in your car and yeah. just meet up at the place yeah. where that's going to all happen if yes. you don't have a bike and yes. don't want to ride. Yes. And then the the ride the same day after, uh, about 11 a.m., we will do kickstand and we will... Uh, conclude there at Harley with prayers in English and our language. Uh, both prayers happen, and then writing instructions will be given, and then we'll write to Piles Boys Camp Ground behind Lake Ming, mm-hmm. and then from there uh, up to 2.30, uh, there will be event, which will be live band, music, dance, 
uh, henna artist for females for tattoos. And uh, we will have a guy there sewing the patches. Mm -hmm. And we also usually get a few other um, kids activity. And then there's all kinds of fun stuff for people from little to an old age to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want everybody to come in and join us there. And they can also go to our Facebook page, which is under Seek Writers of America. And same thing for our Instagram. And they can also visit our website, www.sikwritersofamerica.com. And they can also reach me if there's any other questions or concerns at 661-873-5181. Okay. Now, um, I'm just curious about the types of motorcycles. Are there people that are shy about coming because they don't have a Harley? They've got something else. You know, every now and then we hear uh, that. But at the event, if you come, you're going to see from sports bike to a cruiser to to an Indian bike or to Yamaha, Kawasaki, all kinds of different bikes. Mm-hmm. But people think because if, if the ride is happening... It's starting at Harley Davidson. Maybe it's just Harley's. No, it's not like that. Okay, anybody can come. Yes, everybody. Two wheels, welcome. even three wheels. Yes, you're yes. all welcome. Yes. Okay, yeah. four wheels. Yeah. Even yes. if somebody yes. wanna, you know, show you know, show to the event with their antique car. Okay. Or pickup, you know, they can come and so people can look at it. Okay. Yeah. Now this event starts at eight o'clock. Yes. That's where everybody's going to meet at Harley Davidson on. Uh, Merle Haggard. Yes. And uh, then uh, when, how long is the event? It goes from 8 o'clock until? 2.30. Two, two okay. So that's a good time. You've yes. got most of the day. Yes. And that includes breakfast. It includes lunch. Lunch, yes. If uh, if you want to eat, that's the twenty dollars admission, yeah. and you get a what I guess a coupon or something that when yeah. you get there you yes. show that. Yeah, they get a wristband that a wristband. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so that shows that you've paid your twenty bucks. Yes. And now is it twenty dollars per person per motorcycle? Per motorcycle. Okay. So, so if there's a couple, they just need to pay one twenty. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I'm going to make a suggestion here. I mean, if I find somebody to ride with me, I think we both ought to pay the twenty dollars. Yes. Because it's going for a good cause. Good yes. cause. Yes. So you know, let's not be stingy about this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be well worthwhile. Yes. And this is going to benefit all of the uh, different organizations that do things. And read that list of organizations that are benefiting from this. Yes. Karen River. Blue Star Moms, MAD, Bakersfield Chapter, and Kern County Triple Nine Foundation, which is law enforcement, American Legion Chapter 26, uh, that also here homes in Bakersfield, California. Mm-hmm. Those are the four uh, charities will benefit. The, all the proceeds will go to them. Do you... Do you, I, this is my curiosity question. When when these rides happen and people finally get to meet members of the Sikh community face to face, hand to hand, yes. Um, do you get people that are curious and say, "I'd like to, I'd like to look into becoming a Sikh"? I mean, and does does that happen, or do you, you know, just people, have to be? Uh, it, it hasn't happened, but people have asked questions. Mm-hmm. More questions. How how do you? What's the process to mm-hmm. become a Sikh? You know? And what is the process? It's by choice. It, first of all, if you want to read about the religion and you understand, mm-hmm. and if you like the teachings of it, then it's a very simple process. You, there's no, you don't even need to get an authorization from anybody. Mm. When, once you understand the religion and you start believing and praying the practice, we pray every morning. And our prayer includes, says that God give good health, wealth, and happiness to the entire globe and then to myself. So we pray for every human being on the planet. But you pray for other people first. Other people yes. first. And for yourself last. last. Yourself last. You tell See, God, God, you know, first give them a good health, wealth, happiness, and make a world a better place. And then to myself and then once you start believing in that, uh, most people, they, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to cut your hair, it's mm-hmm. a natural way of life. You let your beard glow, grow long and your head hair grow long. And the turban is to keep your hair clean, your head wrapped, you know, it's to respect 
um, the the whole thing started when uh, the turban is to more like a crown. Mm-hmm. So you feel uh, one to protect your hair, to your, your head, but also it's like a crown that you put on your head. And then if you want to become a baptized and that uh, has little more restrictions, which like you have to pray for, uh, or uh, morning prayer and prayer at night and do some other things which religion or religion say you shouldn't drink any alcohol do any drugs and that's when you have to be baptized but you're allowed to eat any meat uh any uh your diet for his eating is not restricted but doing any sort of drugs are restricted once mm-hmm. you're baptized mm-hmm. and for that you go to temple and they every Three months. They don't even ask you how long you've been a Sikh, how long you've been not a Sikh. Mm -hmm. And so they do uh, baptize early in the morning, and then anybody can be part of their prayers, and then they give them holy water, and then they're baptized. Okay. So it's a very simple process. Right. Yeah. And Sikh Sikh, Sikh means a learner. Sikh means a student. Sikh means a a student. student. Learner, learner of a how to become a good human being. Okay. And, uh, Learn, like, do you have a student? Student means he's getting the knowledge of science right. and other things and doctor, you know, medicine, biology. Mm-hmm. But seek means a learner who can okay. become a good human and, being. And but the, we're, and hold, the, hold I've got to stop you for a second. I hate to do this, but we're out of time, so we've got to stop. But I want to, maybe you guys will come back and sure. we can talk more about the Sikh religion yes. and uh, the teachings and the kinds of things that people might know that would interest them for in sure. becoming Sikhs. Yes. So thank you so much for thank coming. You, I really appreciate thank you, you for both. Having us here. I appreciate your whole, your whole group that are involved in doing all of this. Thank you, Tony. And I want to thank you guys out there for listening, too. I hope you've got a motorcycle. If not, you get in your car and drive over there. You know, it's it's not restrictive. You don't have to have a motorcycle. But if you do, it's going to be at 8 o'clock on October 9th. It's a Saturday. And uh, just go on over there, get your 20 bucks paid in, and go out and have some really good food, some good music, good uh, camaraderie and uh, friendship. And we'll see you there.